There are a great deal of misconceptions about early America, not just European contact with the natives, but what America was like before Europeans showed up altogether. I think people have this idea that Native Americans just live scattered all over the two continents, just living in tents, kind of like it was just one big camping trip. This, of course, is not at all what was going on. All over the Americas, there were cities that rivaled London and Rome in size, sometimes even eclipsing them. There were many civilizations that lived and died. They had monetary systems, languages, cultures, religions, and what we have today is just a fraction of what existed. There is so much about the Americas that we will just simply never know. This is due to smallpox. When smallpox was introduced into Mexico in 1519, it is estimated that Central America had a population of about 20 million or so. By the 1570s, this had gone all the way down to just a little over a million. And if it was that bad in Mexico, imagine how bad it was all across South and North America. This means that by the time the first French and European mountain men started exploring North America, they weren't walking into America as it had been for thousands of years. They were walking into a desolate wasteland, a place where there had once been many civilizations, but now there was really nothing left but a few remnants. The reason why I'm giving you this context is because we need to understand why the 4chan Florida Pyramid story is pretty believable. Now what is the 4chan Florida Pyramid story? Well let's go back to 2019 to 4chan's wonderful K-board. Like I said, the story was posted back in 2019. I'll be posting the full story on my screen now and there'll be a link in the description to the original archive, but I'll give you a very quick synopsis. Basically, our heroic Anand decides to go on a wonderful little camping trip in the Everglades. He takes a kayak and an M1903 Springfield rifle that was used by his grandpa to shoot rodents in his backyard, which is a pretty funny gun to be doing that with. Anyway, while he was kayak kayaking to various points, he realized that he was being pursued by a pack of giant wolves, which is quite terrifying, and we'll get to them in a minute. While he was trying to escape the wolves, which was a multi-day process, he ran across what he described as a Mayan-style pyramid deep in the Everglades. He said as he approached it, he realized there was a large screaming noise coming from the inside of it, and that there was a big open top. He didn't describe it as being anything too big, but he did say it was distinctly Mayan in appearance. He continued to run away. He actually ended up shooting one of the wolves and it went off to die, which of course leads me to believe it was an actual flesh and blood creature. He ran out of ammo for his rifle, dropped it in the Everglades, and by the skin of his teeth, made it home. It is a great story. It's much better read than said, so please, again, go ahead and read the story. Now, there are obviously some paranormal aspects of the story. One is the screaming that is coming with inside the pyramid. Now, he insists that this was a very real thing. This was not a product of his admitted dehydration or his paranoia. He, is, he seems pretty convinced that this was a real thing that really happened. Now, of course, it's easy for us to say, sitting behind our computer monitors, that, of course, that's impossible, that would never happen. But the Everglades are still a very wild place. The Florida Everglades are about as wild as the American South can possibly get, and it's not totally unbelievable that pyramids would be hidden there. In fact, he is more than kind enough to leave a map later on in the thread of where he believes the pyramids could be. By the way, if you would like me and a team of fellow adventurers to go try and locate this pyramid and maybe even his rifle, hit the like button and subscribe. Anyway. Here's why the pyramids part of the story is actually very, very believable. But before we get into that, a little bit more context about American archaeology. As I'm sure some of you remember, maybe from grade school, you remember maybe talking about the mounds. And in school, they don't really look like anything other than mounds. It's like, yep, that's a mound. I'm not really sure what else I would call that. Well, here's what they don't tell you. Sure, many of these mounds, like Serpent Mound, literally are just mounds. However, many of these mounds are actually temples and other buildings that are literally just covered under piles of dirt and rubble. 
However, due to laws about Native American archaeology, Native American heritage, and things like that, a lot of these places cannot legally be dug up. In fact, it would be a federal crime, a felony, to do any archaeology on this without the specific consent of the Native Americans. However, one of the horrible, sad things about this is that many of these tribes will not allow you to excavate these sites. And this is a pretty well-known thing in the archaeology community. But the biggest concern from these tribes is that they'll find out that they actually weren't the first people to live in their specific spot. Which, by the way, is a ridiculous idea. No group of people living anywhere were the first people to live in that spot. That's crazy. The Earth's a very old place. The human race is a very old race. To suggest that you're the first group of people to live somewhere is, is just insane. It doesn't make any sense. So, anyway, that rant aside... There are many mounds like this all over Florida that are actually structures that are, again, just concealed under rubble. Remember that smallpox epidemic we talked about earlier? Your population gets disintegrated by a disease. These buildings are just left to the elements, which means when a plant dies on them, when a dust storm blows through, when a hurricane comes through, there's no one really to clean anything up. So these buildings get covered really quick. But here's the kicker. There is a wonderful site in Florida called the Crystal River Site, and it has exactly what we're talking about here. The site itself is very Mayan in structure. It resembles many Mayan cities and other sites in Central and South America. And guess what? All along the site, they are finding Mayan glyphs and language and images, things that are distinctly Mayan. Make no mistake, there were Mayan settlements in Florida. In fact, it's possible these weren't even just Mayan-adjacent or Mayan-related civilizations. We're talking about a place that could have just been straight up a settlement, a colony, an outpost for the Mayans. And if you look at the geography, it makes sense. We know that traveling by boat is easier than traveling by land. This is a place that could have been easily accessible by Mayan shipping routes. So, what does this mean? Keep in mind, modern academia still refuses to acknowledge that Mayan civilization went any further than North Mexico, despite overwhelming evidence in Florida. Why is that? I don't know. This gets into a bigger conversation that can't be touched in the last few minutes of a simple YouTube video. But for reasons unknown to me, there's a narrative about American history. There's a narrative about world history. And there are people and academics who have made their whole living talking about their version of what world history is. The reality is no one alive was there. All we have is just small pieces of evidence here and there for us to build a picture of what the past looked like. Think about it. Even when we're talking about things like the Roman Empire or ancient England, all we have is just records and artifacts, and from those records and artifacts, we piece together the most accurate picture of history we possibly can. But let me give you a reason why you should be highly skeptical of our narrative about history at all times. It is estimated by paleontologists, people who study ancient life forms, that we will only ever know about 1% of all of the life that has ever existed on this planet, living or extinct. There's a big reason why they come to that number, but that is the number they decided on. And this is with all the advanced methods and all the wonderful scientific instruments that we have. They think that at most, we will only ever know about 1%. So what exists in that 99% of paleontology? That is worth a video on its own, but let's take that same principle and apply it to world history. What percentage of Roman records survive today? What percentage of Roman buildings, Roman stories, survived to today? Do you think it's 50%? 90%? Or do you think it's a lot lower than that? And if it's that low for a civilization as well known and documented as Rome, how much lower then for civilizations that didn't have written records? How much lower then for civilizations that were decimated by an apocalypse, that didn't have time to compile the records, that didn't have time to tell each stories to each other about how their civilization rose? How much is missing of our past? And I'll leave you with that. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe. And if you would like to see me and a brave team of adventurers heading to the Florida Everglades one day to try and find that rifle and, more importantly, find that pyramid, please leave a like and subscribe. If you want to support the channel directly, go into the description and buy a sticker from Civilian Expedition Outfitters. Have a wonderful day, guys. Hope to catch you in the next one.